So it feels like we're entering a time where, uh, and I know I say this all the time, but things are ramping up. Things have been on a, you know, a steady ramp up, but it has these uh, periods of uh, more intense activity, and then times when uh, they let up on the throttle. In a, a larger world, um, geopolitical world show sense, things are kind of um, in between gears. But as far as a metaphysical kind of thing, I feel like, uh, not that I'm just a bit more plugged in, but that everything's more plugged in. Synchronicities um, are, are getting crazier and more uh, intricate. For instance, um, I met a few neighbors recently who are kind of, uh, who understand this stuff a bit too and uh, each have their own kind of uh, means of reportage uh, on social media. And uh, one of them lives on next door to me and she had been given some really bizarre paperwork by uh, a neighbor that she didn't really know, an older woman, who she'd seen around the building but didn't have a lot of interaction with. And she gave her uh, these papers, forms, uh, somewhere handwritten. I'm going to do a, a video more about it, exactly what it is and why it uh, had any relevance to me. But. Um, she gave her these papers and she scanned them and sent them over to me because she said she she kind of felt like um well she at first she didn't say there was only only after when i said i think these are for me uh she then agreed and said yeah that's kind of what i thought when she first gave them to me so this is a case of getting something from uh yeah sure do dear how are you doing this morning Hi. good here take a couple I only got only got this much. I smoked too much. Have a good day. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the what I mean by things are getting more uh, complex or odd. I mean that that's really a strange one to have someone a stranger give basically a stranger uh, information that was. Uh, I don't know if it was specifically meant for me, but it was relevant to some of the stuff that was going on uh, with me. Uh, it was about, well, it's hard to get into it without explaining the whole thing. And it's, I want to read it a bit more and then couch it in what my deal was. But basically, bottom line, yeah, the stranger gave a, a new friend uh, some um, information pertaining to some something I was thinking of. That's just the system and, and or the system that's in place. It's not actually it's not the system. It's like a tapestry of interconnected consciousness, the uh, us, what we are. It exists separate from the system here, the B system, the matrix system that runs scripts. Uh, this I guess it's, you could call it another system. Our, our shared consciousness doesn't run scripts. It, uh, it seeks to speak to itself. It seeks to give itself answers to, um, because it's all, it's all one consciousness, it's all one thing, divided into different points of attention, and as the saying goes, expressing themselves as individuals. So you're trying to give yourself messages all the time. These come from, though, inside you. They're not something that's out there. Uh, and But it's definitely ramped up as far as you talking to yourself through the other people around you. Um, just a couple years ago, it became so intense that I started taking a lot of notes. And, and that's how this channel started, because I was taking video notes and I thought, hey, if I could upload these and just maybe get people some input from other people about what, what they think. And it, it all 
ended up being very positive for me. And, and there was a lot of uh, commonality between what I was experiencing and others were experiencing. I've made some good contacts and friends. I, I get information now. Um, so it, it, that's just what I wanted to do. But it's because of the volume and, and the uh, speed of these kind of weird happenings. Yeah, the, the thing, it's like a tapestry kind of. I call it a, people call it a web, you know, sometimes too, the, the linked consciousness, but I don't like spiders, so I would call it a mosaic. And uh, tapestry sounds too hippy-dippy. But um, yeah, it's, it's basically the interconnectivity of the base consciousness um, trying to reintegrate with, itse with itself, if not in form, well, in form it would like to, but in thought, um, by giving itself messages from other uh, parts of itself. What the, someone went crazy on the, the barrels. Actually, I don't think they, I always thought they were bolted in or something. I guess not, someone was, someone was having a little hissy fit. You see a lot of hissy fits here. Uh, a lot of uh, puerile kind of behavior. But yeah, I thought um, that was kind of a weird one worth talking about. I've had similar things like that before. Uh, this is just the latest and, you know, one of many different odd things that, that well, they're not odd anymore. Um, as far as synchronicities go, I used to keep a log of uh, exactly when a synchronicity would happen, what it was related to, in an attempt to kind of find some through line uh, to then kind of see if, if I could uh, glean something from it to like move in a different direction or not so much to see the future, but by following the structure of what is there to try to then take that and apply it to other things, if that, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting stuff. I was talking last night about the, uh, all the distractions that are currently in the media. They're trying to find newer distractions. Um, they need they need stuff that gets people mad. This Roe versus Wade thing is a good one, and they also need stuff that gives them plausible deniability as far as when they need to uh, because they, they introduce things for what they want. For instance, the um, the coof uh, illness was introduced whether you think it's real or not or a bio thing or weaponized or not that was introduced so that we could have the cure um same thing with uh the aids epidemic the same guy actually about you uh so they what they do is they figure out what they want and this is how they've always done it and then they reverse engineer uh situations to to give them what they want they want to clamp down a bit more now on the population as if they already haven't. After, I, I think it could be because of what happened with the whole trucker thing and just general sentiment among the population. So they, they kind of want to let people remember who's boss. So as a, as a reason to do this, they, um, I believe that's what the, the abortion thing was about. Because after that came out, as I was showing some, um, I showed like a news clip from it in the last video, uh, where they, uh, they're saying now they're afraid of right-wing attacks because of the Roe versus Wade thing, which is kind of weird because I always thought, it's like they got the, the wrong team. <laughs> they, they have their teams mixed up. They really haven't. They just want to do um, right-wing attacks and this is just what they have right now, ready to go for it. So even though it doesn't make any sense, it's what they're gonna roll with. I mean, even though a lot of these uh, ideas and plans are very, very old, they still have to be um, 
pulled off by the people currently available to do that. And there's a high level of incompetence and stupidity involved here. Um, so that's where you have a situation where it's, it's almost like they'll take anything. They, they wanted to do the right wing attacks, which basically false flags, you know. And they said, well, what do we have? Do we have the, the abortion thing? Well, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, whatever, it's all we got. We got to roll with it. But the thing is that no one even really knows or it, it seems like no one's taking the time to really learn what it is actually about. It's not about uh, banning it or anything. It's about returning, uh, re returning decisions of whether or not to do it to uh, individual states. It hasn't, it's not being banned, but they need to, you know, they need to package everything in a certain way for the maximum outrage. And they don't need uh, a lot of outrage. They just need a little independent outrage. Outrage that isn't manufactured by them. Because all, if they get a little bit, they can then use their own manufactured outrage. That's why they're always constantly looking for uh, domestic uh, T-boys. Because if they can find one, just one that's working independently of them, it gives them so much ammunition and so much power because then they can do all this fake shit based on the one organic thing they have. That's why I always say, like, you can't fight them in the traditional means, uh, standing up for things like going on. So you can't do that because they'll just take that and you're, emp you're empowering them. It's a really weird situation. It's a lot like a Chinese finger trap. It's like there's, to, to get out of it, you can't go up against it. You're just pouring gasoline on a, uh, on a fire. But how do you explain it to someone, you know? People are angry, you know, and they want, they want retribution. They want vengeance, you know? So it's hard to explain to them uh, that, no, you can't, you can't win this by, by fighting in a traditional way or to aggress. In fact, you're going to lose because every um, ounce of that aggression that you're using, whether it's uh, physical or emotional or mental or, you know, whatever it is, if you're attacking them in an article even, you know, whatever you're doing, any aggression they can take, and it, that little piece becomes a huge piece when it's in their hands and you gave it to them. Um, but when people are angry and they're confused and they're hungry or they're worried about the future, it's kind of hard to sell that as a concept, as a non-aggression principle concept. You, no one wants to hear that shit, you know? But this force, and ultimately that's what it is, it's that the opposing force, the dark force, the hijackers of the realm, um, led by the... the fancy piano boy you know they that's their their fucking thing is aggression um, and aggressing on people if you try to flip that on them they take that I mean I don't know I said it like 10 times the same way hey what's up Dale how you doing man what's going on brother oh uh, not much no I'm just kind of hanging around good seeing you though man yeah, they'll take that, uh, any, it's, it is, it's the Emperor from Star Wars, man. They take that and they throw it back at you. And then you lose. But yeah, they really want those, uh, homegrown, uh, white cis, uh, T-boys. And by T-boys, I don't mean the good kind. I mean, uh, you put the Terra in front of it, I don't want to see the work. But they're, they're really looking for someone they could framed as that and there's a budget for this stuff right so I mean even if you just shit post you could be the shittiest shit poster in your neighborhood and suddenly you get bumped up to the top of the surveillance list as a possible candidate for T-Boy even though you don't do anything because they need to, to root these people out not root these people out they in their they, they, they want to create these people, pull these people 
out and saddle them with all this baggage of what they think a uh, domestic tea would be. So you gotta be careful in these times. Like you, I have always used to think like that there'll be some point in the future where you'll be like the protagonist in a sort of dystopian sci-fi 1984 type scenario like that where you have to like uh, stick and move. Well, that time is now. You know, they're not, they're not gathering this information for some point in the future. They'll act on anything they have now. And if they can position you to uh, fill a role of a, of a certain kind of person that they need to, to demonize so they can then roll out all the fake shit, they'll do that. So it's, uh, and, and like I said, you might be, the only thing you are maybe is just a shit poster, but you might go to the top of the list in your area because you might live with a bunch of people that aren't, you know, I, I don't know how to really phrase that, but, you know, you may live in a, in a place where there's no one that is anti evil plan that just kind of go along with it you know a lot of I guess blue team areas um, it would be the the places there like I, I'm very much in a blue team area um, so I might be the, the craziest fucking wild card in this area as far as that goes I mean for to use to get someone that they can use to say well this guy is absolutely crazy he says hey guys sometimes and we all know what that leads to dressing up like the Riddler and indiscriminately attacking people and blowing up the seawall why would they build the city that that low under seawall that's dumb actually this city is under sea level um, if you go up to the mountains up here or if you go to the hospital up here on the mountain you look down why can is like in a bowl most of Honolulu is. I don't know how that happens. It's a lot of this is wetland around here too. Uh, construction projects will sometimes get held up by funding or uh, the local politics as far as uh, who gets to build what and do what is a pissing match for the ages almost every time, you know, between different backgrounds. And um, so a lot of times these construction projects will get held up. And I remember we used to go uh, to McDonald's back in the day before just to hang out before the COVID thing happened. And um, they were building a building. It's done now, but they had to stop construction for like almost a year. And you could see that the lip of the newer portion of the building, they're putting an addition onto it. It, had, it was, was no longer flush. It looked to be like maybe a half inch. You know, I'm spending most of my life doing civil engineering, I can kind of see these things just from uh, having a OCD in, the, in that department. So what, what I'm saying is it sank. It sank a little bit. Um, this, most of the, the area here that have buildings on them, you would not be able to build on anywhere on the mainland because it, it wouldn't pass muster it, as far as being able to lay a foundation. It would be considered wetland, that unbuildable wetland. But here, I mean, there's not a lot of space here. This island's pretty small. You could go around the entire thing in a couple hours in a car. So there's not a lot of room. The reason they don't build up very high though, I think, is because of the weight because of the sinkage you know and that only gets exacerbated over time you know interesting situation I'm gonna head up the beach now and uh, I'll get something else going that I want to talk about I'm gonna cut it here because uh, I want to try to start keeping these a little bit shorter if possible but uh the way, the way I blow V8, I, I, you know, it's a challenge. Don't blame the teacher, blame the school.